Hi folks, Joseph Kursky here with you to talk about the history of geographic information systems. 10 items about the history of GIS. Number one, the help files. Where was the help documentation way back when? I know you're gonna say, Joseph, it was down the hall. It was on paper. Absolutely, it was down the hall and guess what? It was in someone's office. You had to go into someone's office, for example, in the organization I worked in, and ask for them to loan you, or at least let you be in their office while you borrowed the ARC Info Help books, the actual books with the commands. So you could go back to your desk after you had written some of these things down and implement them into your workstation. That was the number one thing. The help documentation was just not at your fingertips like it is nowadays. Number two, GIS tools were command line driven. You had to type in map scale, one to 500,000, map color, four, which was blue back then, because you had a 12 color workstation monitor. More about that in a moment. But the GIS tools were commands that you actually typed in, in either Arc Info or Idrisi or any other software. You actually had to type in these commands. Number three, in the early days of GIS, you had, as I mentioned, a 16 color monitor, which was a huge leap forward from the single color monitors in some workstations. You had 16 colors if you were really lucky, and that was pretty cool because you could make 16 color maps. Ooh. Number four, in the early days of GIS, the output was, wait for it, paper. Paper was the output. There was no web map sharing or outputting it into files. You could output it into files, but chances are your collaborators would not be able to read those files unless they had the exact same version of the software that you had. So mainly the output was paper. Paper that you could then scan perhaps and put into an article. So paper was the output. And that's why layouts became such a huge thing. How are we gonna structure our layouts so we have a, a projection information, our source information, our title, our orientation, our date, our author, etc. So the output was paper. Number five, in the early days of GIS, data came on physical medium, physical media, analog tapes, actual reel-to-reel -reel tapes in the way back early days, and big floppy disks, and then smaller floppy disks, and then later CD-ROMs, and DVDs, and, and hard drives, and little drives that we used to carry around in our necks because they were, wow, we could carry around three gigs on our necks. But it was in physical media. The data, number six, the data was very sparse. A few private companies created data and some government agencies. And that's where you had to direct your projects unless you wanted to scan or digitize your own data in, but the data was not as freely avail available as it is nowadays. There were no hub sites, there were no portals, there were no living atlases of the world, etc. So that was number six. Number seven, to get data from maps, how did you have to do it? I hinted at this a moment ago. You had to scan in your maps, analog existing maps or aerial photographs or even satellite images that were printed or you had to digitize them on a big digitizing tablet like a big calcomp tablet we had several of these at the u.s geological survey where i worked and at the u.s census bureau and you had to actually trace all of the points lines and polygons on your maps to get them encoded into digital form very laborious process days weeks months of just tracing all of that digitizing and millions of people all over the world did that exact same thing in government agencies, private companies, nonprofits, academia, etc. Number eight in our history of way back when with GIS, there were no base maps per se. We had digital raster graphics from the US Geological Survey, for example, which were scanned topographic maps, but there were no base maps. So consequently, all the data and the output that you'd see in a GIS project was on a blank white screen or a blank white piece of paper backdrop. There were some points, lines, and polygons and imagery and grids, but the, the base map was non-existent. So you always had to have an index map showing, okay, this is north central Nebraska, let's say. Number nine, the software changes were slow. You could sort of get a, along with updating every year or two with software. So the software evolution was, was quite slow, along with the hardware evolution but the software evolution and the changes were quite slow. There was no quarterly updates, and you had to actually install that software with a variety of physical media. Number 10 in our history of GIS, way back in the early days, 
the community of GIS users was relatively small. GIS was a niche sort of an operation where a few people know, know a lot about GIS and it took years for them to get trained into being proficient in GIS. There were conferences. We had the ESRI user conferences going back to the early 1980s. We had something called GIS LIS, which was a pretty big annual conference that happened until about 1998. We had the GITA conferences, we had ASPRS, we had a few others, state, regional, uh, international conferences as well. But the community was fairly small and you could get around knowing certain individuals rather well. There were some people in planning, geography, environmental studies, transportation, and a few other fields, but nothing like we have today in terms of the widening of the number of disciplines using GIS. So those are 10 items about way back in the early days of GIS. And we've come a long way. We've got a long way to go, but we've made a lot of progress since then. Thanks.